Today's reading comes to us from the book of Ecclesiastes, verses 1 through 13. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to pluck up to what is planted and a time to plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of the past and future into their minds, Yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know there is nothing better for them to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Where shall I look for enlightenment? The disciple asked. Here, the wise one said. When will it happen? The disciple asked. It is happening right now, the wise one answered. Then why don't I experience it? Because you do not look. What should I look for? Nothing. Just look. (laughs) Look at what? at anything your eyes light upon. But must I look in a special way? No, the ordinary way will do. But don't I always look the ordinary way? No, you do not. But why ever not? Because to look, you must be here, and you are mostly somewhere else. Amen to that. (laughs) The last time we attended worship in person at Manchester UMC, I would imagine many of you actually remember it. It was March 7th and 8th, and Saturday worship was also in here because it was a very special weekend. It was the weekend of the Music Makers musical. And in addition to that, it was going to be Ms. Lori Borgers, the director of children's music, her final musical, and, and there was a send-off, and, and a lot of kids who were in college and beyond were back um, being a part of this musical, and it was just amazing. And as I started thinking about time and timing and how different it could have been if, if we closed one week earlier... <laughs> all we would have missed and how thankful I am and so many people are that we were able to have that experience of celebration before we had to close the doors to be to be safe to stay well and since that weekend we've all had uh, worship online and and we want to continue to be safe. And we're getting there, but it's, it's going to take some time. We've stopped thinking this is going to get over with real quick. It's going to take more and more folks receiving vaccinations and the herd immunity that we hear about. We need to continue to be very, very safe right now. And it is January 2021. Hey, Happy New Year. <laughs> Time marches on, doesn't it? And, and we're definitely carrying some baggage from 2020 into this year. We, 
We have to, it can't be helped. We've been through an incredible 10 months with precautions and how we live our lives in order to protect ourselves and anyone around us. And truly time has felt different to me since all of this. And I would imagine that might be true for many of you. We know as human beings, our time is precious primarily because as human beings, our time in this world is limited. We don't know how long we will live. And since COVID-19, many of us have reawakened to that reality that we are human and we are vulnerable. And for many in the midst of this pandemic over time, over the weeks, over the months, time itself has clearly become, for some, the most precious asset of all. And yet, for others, for a myriad of reasons, time has turned day after day into a kind of arduous marathon of hours with too much time alone, too much loneliness. And for others, there may be a house full, and there's too much to do, and our routines had to change, and makes our whole life feel somewhat off kilter. And yet, we're pretty good at adjusting. We get into new routines in our lives, and we can, even in the midst of COVID, at times move into a kind of autopilot, just wanting to get through this very awkward, weird, and dangerous time that we are living in. And possibly, maybe, could we just do all this by going through the motions? You know, God has given human beings an amazing gift. We, we live our lives in the moment, but we are able to remember the past. And in addition to that, we are able to imagine the future. And, and we tend to take this for granted. But it is an amazing thing. We we are often not fully engaged, and it didn't take a pandemic for that to happen. We can spend lots of time thinking about the past or reminiscing about the past or thinking about the future and how that might be and using our imagination and making plans. But you know, We're all really tired. We're tired. Or or maybe (laughs) we're sleeping too much. Or maybe we're lonely. Or there are too many people in the house. Some are overworked and others have nothing to do. We only have so much time in this life. COVID or no COVID, and for many in the midst of this pandemic, and maybe for the first time, time has genuinely become the focus. Time has become for many our most frustrating and yet precious asset of all. My daughter turned 29 in November. And uh, a couple weeks ago, I was here and she called about something and I told her that I had chosen my scripture for this weekend. And, and I, I let her know what it was. I, I, I read it and, um, and I told her the direction I thought I was having, heading, you know, having to do with time, having to do with the value of time. She just, she just reacted. She said, oh my gosh, I know, I know. And then the words just started flowing out of her. She started talking about how her priorities are shifting. At 29, her priorities are shifting. And as much as she has really enjoyed working from home, and she has, she's got a great apartment. She's really looking forward even more to being with coworkers when it's safe and to not wear masks, to be able to see a person's entire face and not have to determine their mood or their attitude just from the look of their eyes. 
when we can see each other's whole face and expression and give and receive hugs and again, not have to worry that we might get sick or they might get sick. She shared that she's come to realize her time is valuable. And not just related to her job. She said, I want to spend less time looking at my phone and more time engaging with the people around me. She said, I want to take vacations again, real vacations, and spend quality time with people I love. And then she mentioned a couple of professional organizations that she's involved in. The kind of organizations where there might be some learning that takes place, but mostly it's more social and it's where you make business contacts. And as she joined up in these organizations, she, she likes to be in leadership roles. She likes to be part of the planning. And so she volunteered her time and they, they readily accepted that. And, and she'd gotten pretty committed even before COVID. And then a lot of things were being done via Zoom. And she, she has come to realize that her free time is actually hers. And she's adjusting priorities in, you, in order to use the time she has as wisely as possible. And she's come to realize that she really doesn't want to be doing as much of that. Kind of sounds like a, a New Year's resolution. But it wasn't triggered by the new year. It was triggered by life experience. It was recognized. It was paid attention to. It was triggered by time lived in a pandemic. Prior to COVID-19, prior to the pandemic, many of us, most of us had become so accustomed to being busy. Busy. That's not a criticism. We are busy people. We are productive people. And that is often the expectation of our work, of our workload, of our home life, of our volunteer activities, and ministries we're involved in at the church. And in our society, if we're not busy, we tend to feel guilty. If we're not being super productive, hyper productive, well, we must be lazy. If we're not the, if we're not the best at what we do, then there must be something wrong with us. Then we must be what? Wasting time. And if that's the case, then of what value are we? Well, for starters, we are children of God. You are a child of God, a beloved child of God, no matter what. So let's just sit with that for a moment. I want to share a story with you. It's about my mother, and it's an experience she had and that she shared with me that has continued to be a reminder to me over time about my use of time. When my mom was in her mid-60s, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and she needed to begin some pretty powerful chemo treatments right away. Now, her ovarian cancer was not a mass that needed to be removed. The way it was described was if you had a handful of flour and you went, and so chemotherapy for her was the way to go. They let her know that she was going to be pretty worn out and at times feel pretty sick through all of this and that this would be her life for at least a few months and probably longer to get through these treatments and achieve remission. Everything else, everything else just needed to be put on hold. 
Well, my mom was involved in a lot of things. She was involved in a couple of women's organizations in which you know, money is raised uh, to, do, to do good work. And she was involved in a number of roles in her church and had been for a long time. And whenever she was involved in something like this, she was always in a leadership role. But it was a behind-the-scenes leadership role. If she were part of a class, she wouldn't want to be the one leading the class, but she'd want to do work behind the scenes. And all of that kept her very, very busy. And I always thought that she just loved doing these things, that it was like breathing in and out for her. So a few weeks after my mom's diagnosis, I was at my parents' house in Columbia. They lived in Columbia to help out for a couple days. Because actually, six weeks before my mom's diagnosis, my dad had been diagnosed with leukemia. And they discovered that when he was in the hospital for a fairly minor operation. So he was on oral chemo. And his oncologist had told him that the primary side effect of his chemo was fatigue. That otherwise, he was probably going to feel fine. That he wasn't going to lose his hair and that uh, as long as he rested, he would probably have enough energy to just live his life as he was accustomed. So his oncologist had told him, you know, why don't you just get into the habit of every day after lunch, just go lay down and let your body rest and just let your body sleep as long as it needs to, and it'll probably be between an hour and two hours. <laughs> And my dad didn't say this to his doctor, but he told us. He said, I am not going to make a habit of taking naps. Naps are for old people. And the man wasn't old. And he was athletic. He, he didn't need sleep. He wasn't going to waste his time that way. So he actually got into the habit of every day after lunch going and sitting on the sofa, maybe starting out reading a book, and pretty soon his eyes would shut and he would sleep for an hour or two. And when he would open his eyes, he would tell my mother, I wasn't sleeping, I was resting my eyes. Whatever it takes, it takes time to heal. It takes time to get well and that's time well spent. So anyway, back to my mother. It'd been two days since my mom's last chemo when I went to visit. And my dad got her a cup of tea, and he went in and checked in with her because she'd been sleeping. And she, she was propped up in bed, and, and you know she wasn't feeling icky, icky, just really worn out. And she said, yeah, she wanted me to come in. And so <clears throat> I did, and I pulled up a chair next to her bed, and we got to talking, and she was sharing a number of things with me about, I was asking about her chemo, and she wanted to talk about it a little bit, and what all was involved with it and everything. And, and, um, and we we'd talked about it, and she, and, and she said, you know, I've I got to tell you. She said, one really, really good thing has come out of this cancer diagnosis. And I thought, what could that possibly be? And she said this. She said, I finally had a good enough excuse to step away from all of my volunteer obligations. Oh my goodness, she needed a diagnosis of cancer to change the way she was spending her time. She, she was so relieved to step away she had voluntarily taken on, voluntarily taken all this on years before and could have stepped away years before. And instead, she spent that precious time doing something that had possibly for years become a burden, a burden that might have been someone else's passion. How often do we justify our existence by being busy? And to whom are we justifying our time? Or sometimes it's just by spending our time in certain roles. 
that may in no way be related to our spiritual gifts. Roles that will cause more frustration and aggravation than anything else. In our scripture, we read the seasons of life. They're listed that are in contrast to one another. And the list begins with what is most fundamentally true, that one day we are born into this world, and then at some point our life in this world ends. And it's true of every human being. How we spend our time matters. And we are not called to be hyper-productive at the expense of living our lives fully, at the expense of loving God and loving people. Your time in this world is precious because you are precious. And you need time to live your life fully. I'm going to wrap this up with a Sanskrit poem that was written more than 2,000 years ago. Listen. Listen to the salutation of the dawn. Look to this day, for it is the very life of life. In its brief course lie all the realities and truth of existence, the joy of growth, the splendor of action, the glory of power. For yesterday is but a memory and tomorrow a vision. But today well lived makes every yesterday a memory of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope. And thanks be to God. Amen.